Hi, my name is Megan Woods, and something that really stood out to me while I was watching the first TED Talk was how the speaker had brought up how a woman had come up to him and said something he felt was super disrespectful towards his students, yet he felt like he couldn't say anything or talk back to her because he had to stand in silence to be respectful towards her because the school needed her money. And I feel like society is making people feel that standing in silence when someone's being disrespectful or ignorant about a topic that they don't know all the information on is the most respectful thing to do, but when in turn it's not, because if someone's being disrespectful, you're probably not the only one in the room that feels disrespected, or when they're talking about a topic they don't know information on, you're probably not the only one that knows that. And the thing is, is we just need someone to speak out and tell them that they're being disrespectful, or give them the more information that they need to be able to talk about a topic clearly and the right way without being ignorant about the topic when they don't know the entire thing, because the world is changing. People data comes everywhere there's always new information coming out of little areas and I feel like with times changing and the whole respect your elders you can I feel like the most respectful thing to do to an elder is to tell them when they're being disrespectful or to tell them when they're wrong and yeah and then with the second video there were two things that really interested me the first one was how the speaker had brought up how schools are producing identical people how they only know the same information because they feel that when these students leave high school, they're going to be learning or going into the same field, when in actuality, that's not the case. There's so many different areas these people could get into. And for example, an artist doesn't need to know science or excel in science in school to be a good artist. And a biologist, if someone's gonna go into biology, they don't need to be able to run a mile because I can assume they're probably not gonna be running miles in their job anytime soon. And then the second thing that really stood out to me was when he had brought up how when he had put the computers in India, how a little girl was teaching other students, or other kids, I guess, how she thought of it, like communicating, like neutrons communicate when she had done her hand signal like this. She had taken a really tough topic to understand, broken it down to have it easier for her to understand, to then teach others how to better understand the topic, which I sort of do in dance, because I'm in dance. So I take a really hard step or a step I find difficult and I take it home and I break it down and I put little like, it's like a map, a map of pinpoints in my brain of what I should be doing at each count. And then at dance I also teach the younger students. So when I get to their class and if they're learning a step that I've made a map of in my brain, I'll break it down for them and show them that exact same way because not every student learns the same. Some students can see a step and be able to do it and others need me to break it down for them so they are able to complete it. So. That was interesting to me. And I'm free really any day except for Mondays and Wednesdays. Weekends depends, but I can really make time, any time obviously, besides Mondays and Wednesdays online. And Fridays, I'm actually on campus from nine to two, not really doing anything, so I can meet up on campus then. And all of my contact information, if you need it, will be in the little comment area below, I guess.